Okay, so in this project, we're going to build an image slider, but we're also going to have the background image change as well. And you can see the background is, is basically in line with this image here. So we're going to have some event listeners on these arrows and these buttons. So when I click, it's going to change this image, but also change the background image and position it into the right place. So you'll see that these are basically connected, this foreground image and the background. All right, so or with the both background images, just one is on this this slide element and then one is on the body element. And we're going to add some JavaScript to uh, to add these event listeners and have everything line up nicely. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get started on the HTML and CSS. I have my project starter open here, the index HTML. I do have a link to font awesome because we'll be using a couple icons for the buttons, the arrows. So down in the title here, let's get rid of that and change it to background slider and get rid of this H1 here. And we're going to have a wrapper or a container called slider dash container. And in here, we're going to have five divs with the class of slide. And this first one, I'm also going to give a class of active. That's going to represent the, the current image or the active image. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. And nothing is going to go in these divs. We're going to add an inline style for the background image. So let's say background image and set that to URL. And then inside here, we're going to put a link to an image, which I'm going to grab real quick. And if you want these exact images, you can get them from the, fi the uh, final repository. So that's all that these divs are going to be just a class of slide with a, a inline style background image. So I'm going to just grab and paste the the other four. So this div ends here. You still want to be within the container. And I'm going to paste these other four in and save. So the other four don't have the class of active. Only the first one should have the active class and then under all those divs, but still in the container. So right above the last div here, we're going to have our buttons. And this one's going to have a class of arrow and a class of arrow dash left or left arrow. And then also an ID of left. And the button itself is going to be a font awesome icon. So I tag class of FAS and then FA dash arrow dash left. All right. And then we'll go ahead and just copy that down and let's replace left here, here and here with right. Okay, and that should do it. So I'm going to save and this is all we're going to see for now. We don't see the background image because these divs have no content and we didn't set a height or width on these divs. So we're not going to see the images just yet. Now let's jump into our style sheet and ultimately the background image is going to get generated through the JavaScript. But for now, I'm going to just just uh, hard code a background image. And I'm going to use the first image from the HTML here from this first div. I'm just going to grab that and we'll go ahead and put that in there. And if I save, we should now see that background image. I'm going to add some background properties. So let's add the position. So the background position will be center on both the X and Y axis. And let's add a background size and set that to cover. And there we go. Now I'm also going to add a transition here because ultimately we're going to change images and I just want to have like kind of a little uh, little slide effect, a little slide transition. So on the on the body, let's add a 0.4 second transition and we'll use the ease effect. And you can see when I save, it kind of shows you that. All right. Now for the overlay, because we don't want this whole like we don't want the, this image to be this bright. So for the overlay, I'm going to take the body and use the before pseudo selector. And when we use before or after, we have to add content here, which we're not actually adding any content. So just leave that blank. And what we're essentially doing is just putting an overlay over this image here. So we want to position this to be absolute. So it's going to be absolute. And then uh, from the top, so top zero and left zero. So we're just starting in the top left corner and then we want the width 
to be 100% and we want the height to be 100 viewport height. So we want to just take up the entire viewport. Um, and then for the background, say background color, we're going to set that to RGBA and set it to black. And then let's do 0.7 for the for the alpha for the transparency. Now you can see we have the overlay, but the arrows are actually behind the overlay and we don't want that. So I'm going to set the Z index to negative one. I'm going to set it lower. So now that everything will be on top of the overlay. So now let's go ahead and add the slider container styles. So we're going to have a, a box shadow here. And we're going to have two shadows. The first will do zero. Let's do zero, three pixels. So the eight, um, horizontal and vertical offset. And then the blur will do six pixels and the color RGBA, which is going to be black. And for the alpha value, let's do 0.16. And then we'll put a comma here for the next shadow, which will be zero, three pixels, six pixels. RGBA and let's do 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.23 and we can't see that yet because we don't have any content. We also don't have a height or width. So let's set a height here of we'll do 70 viewport heights and let's give this a width of 70 VW, which is viewport widths. And now you can see the outline here. You can see the box shadows. Uh, and then I also want to just add position relative because the slides are going to be positioned absolute within the container and then also overflow hidden because we don't want anything going out of the container. So we'll set that as well. Um, now we have multiple divs with background images and each one has a class of slide, but only one should have a class of active. So I'm going to set slide initially set the opacity to zero and then down here let's say slide with the class of active then that's going to have an opacity of one so we only see the first one okay now this slide class we have to add a bunch of other stuff here remember this has the background image on it it's just in line so it's not in the style sheet so i do want to set well, you know what? Let's do the height and width first so that we can actually see the image. So we'll do a height of 100 viewport heights and a width of 100 viewport widths. OK, so that obviously doesn't look right. We want to add some background position. So background position is going to be center center on both X and Y. And let's do a background size of cover. And there we go. Now I do want to set uh, the position of this to absolute. And then I want to set from the top negative 15 pixels. So it's going to move it up a little bit. And then let's say from the left negative or not 15 pixels, 15 VH like that. Uh, and then the left is going to be negative 15 VW. All right. And then we're going to have a uh, transition on this because these these are going to be switched the background images and we want a nice transition. So let's do 0 0.4 seconds and use an ease effect and just set the Z index to one so that it's always on top. Now for the arrow. Let's go ahead and add that class here and uh, I'm going to position Remember, both both of the buttons have the class of arrow. I'm going to position them to be fixed and then to see them uh, just temporary because ultimately they're going to be like, you know, over here and over here. But right now they're behind this. So uh, and this slide has a Z index of one. So let's set the Z index of this just temporarily I'm going to set it to 100 so now that we can see them and since we position them fixed we they're basically both in the same spot uh, but we'll fix that let's just add some style to them so we'll add a background 
let's say background color transparent. Okay, and now let's make the actually let's add some padding there. So padding will do 20 pixels. Gonna break it up a little bit. Let's set the font size. Because remember, we're using font awesome icons, so we're gonna set the font size to 30 pixels. And then let's set the I want to move it down. Actually, before we do that, let's do the border, which I'm going to do two pixels solid and orange for the color. Okay, and then let's say from the top, let's go down 50%, but we want to be in the exact middle. We don't want just the top of it to be in the middle. So the way we can do that is by adding a transform property. So transform, we want to set translate y because we're this is on the y axis which is the vertical axis and we just want negative 50% which will move it up into the exact middle so the middle of this is now right in the middle now for the let's see so we have a left arrow and a right arrow if we look back here we have left arrow oops left arrow, right arrow. So I'm going to position those. So let's say left arrow and remember the arrows are position fixed. I'm going to set the left position and pass in a calc value here. So this will calculate whatever I put in here, which is going to be 15 viewport widths minus 65 pixels. And if I save that, you can see that now this is over here, the left arrow. So the right arrow, we want to calculate that. So let's just copy this. And let's set right arrow. And instead of setting the left position, we want to set from the right the same thing. 15 VW minus 65. And that should put that and put them in the right spot. Um, now, we don't want these to actually be have a higher Z index than this, because you can see right here, it's going over it. So we're going to get rid of that Z index of 100 and save. And now you can't see the edge. It's just kind of coming off of the image. And then one other thing, when I click on this, you see that outline, we want to get rid of that. So let's go up here and say arrow when it's in the focus state, we want to set the outline to zero. So now we shouldn't have that outline and we also want the arrow to be white. So right here, arrow, let's go color and set that to white. All right, cool. So that gives us a CSS. Oh, one other thing. Let's make it a, a pointer when we hover over it. So we'll add cursor pointer. There we go. So our CSS is done. Now we want, obviously we want this to function. We want to be able to slide the image, also the background image. So in the next video, we'll start on the JavaScript. Okay, so now that we have the HTML and CSS done, we want to jump into the JavaScript and we want to make this function so that when we click the arrow, that it slides the background image uh, and it also changes this image. So let's first bring in everything we need. We want the body itself, which we can get from the document object and then body. And let's grab the slides. Now slides is more than one. The slide classes, uh, we have five divs with the class of slides. So we're going to use document dot uh, query selector all because there's multiple. So we want all with the class of slide. Uh, and then we want the right and left buttons. So we'll say const left btn set that to document dot we'll use get element by id because we have an id of left and then we also want the id of right and we'll call this one right button and then i'm going to initialize a variable here called active slide so we know which one we're on it's going to start at zero and then we'll have a function say function and we'll call this set BG to body. So this is going to set the background to the body. And I'm actually going to go in the style CSS and get rid of on the body here. Remember, I put I hard coded the background image. I'm going to get rid of that so we don't see that there anymore. And we want to 
in this function take the body and add a style of background image. So when we deal with, with CSS through JavaScript, it's going to be a uh, camel case like this. You're not going to use dashes or hyphens, whatever. Um, so set the background image to and we're going to have our slides. Now slides is when you use this query selector all, this is going to be what's called a node list. So it's similar to an array and we can say, you know, slide zero for the first one, one for the second and so on. We're going to put the active slide in here, which it starts at zero. And then we want to do dot style dot background image because that's what we want to get. So we're getting if we look at our HTML, we're getting the first slide, which is this div here, right here, and we're getting the background image URL, which is going to be this. And we're going to set that to the body. Now we want to call this. So I'm just going to go right above this and say set BG to body. And if I go ahead and save that, now you can see we have our background image, our first image. Now we want to be able to set the active slide to the next image. So let's also create a function called set active slide. And what we'll do is take the slides that we brought in, which remember is a, a, a node list and we want to loop through. I'm going to use the for each method here and say for each slide. And this is going to take an arrow function. So for each slide, I'm going to take that slide and remove the class. So if we do class list dot remove, we can remove a specific class and that's going to be active. Okay, so we're going to remove that. And since we used an arrow function, we don't even need these curly braces. We can just do that. And then after that for each, I'm going to take slides again. That's the node list and take the active slide. And I want to add the class of, act, of active to that. So dot class list dot add and add the class of active. Now, if I go up to the top here and I change the active slide to one, it's going to have the background image. The second one is the background image. If I change it to two, it'll be the third one. Because remember, it's it's uh, a, a node list, which is basically like an array. So it's zero based. Um, and that's being changed down here. We're setting the background image to whatever that active slide is. So zero and then it's one, two, zero, one, two, three, four. Now for the front image, we just need to change the class of active to whichever one we want to display. So if I manually come down here and put it on the second one, that's what's going to show. So what we'll do is add event listeners onto these arrows so that we can increment this active slide. So let's go we'll go right here and let's take the right button and let's add an event listener and we want to listen for a click. And once we do that, we're going to run a function. I'll use an arrow function. So on the right button, we want to take the active slide and increment it by one. So we'll just do plus plus. Now we want to check for the end so we can say if the active slide is greater than the slides dot length, which will give us the total length of the node list. But we want to just take one off of that. And if that's true, then we want to set it back to zero. So we'll set active slide equal to zero. Now, once we set the active slide, we just want to call the two functions down below. So the first one is going to be set BG to body because that'll set the background and then we want to set the active slide. All right, so we'll save that. And now if I come over and I click on this, you'll see that it'll go to the next image. It changes the background, which also has that transition on it. Remember, we added that transition to the body. So you have that kind of that that effect there, that slide effect or it's more like a stretch kind of effect. And if we get to the last one, it just starts over. OK, so we have, let's see, the first image, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then it starts over. So that functionality is done. Now, 
we're going to do essentially the same thing with the left button just in the opposite direction. So I'm going to copy everything from the right button listener and let's set this to the left button and on click we want to decrement the slide. So minus minus that's going to take, you know, take away one and we want to check for the beginning. So we can simply check and see if active slide if it's going to be greater than I'm sorry, uh, less than zero, then we want to set the active slide to the end to the last one, which is going to be slides dot length uh, slides dot length and then just minus one off of that. Okay, and then again, just call set background to body and set active slide. So now I can go forward I can go backwards. And if I'm on the first one and I go backwards, it takes me right to the last one. All right, cool. So that gives us a nice little slideshow. Um, obviously, this itself isn't too uh, useful. I mean, I guess it would be if it's like an image gallery. But I mean, I want you to just kind of understand the whole logic of this, bringing in the all the slides with query selector all. Um, having the background change to whatever the background image is for that specific slide and then looping through all the slides, removing the active class and then adding the active class onto the next one, okay, which is going to be either, you know, increment or decrement depending on which arrow we click. So that's it. Hopefully you guys like this project. Let's jump into the next one.